Hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Data 101 course. Today we will be talking about machine learning in depth. So basically we will be learning the algorithms and concepts in machine learning. So we will be talking about uh, very famous concepts, very important concepts like gradient descent, linear regression, k-means clustering, bias variance trade-off. Right? We will be talking about some machine learning models and some algorithms which are commonly used. And for you to become a good data scientist or a good machine learning engineer, you need to know all of these concepts. So let's start with the first one, which is gradient descent. Uh, so when we talk about gradient descent, it is essentially a mathematical function, right? It helps you calculate, it, it helps you reach the local minima. What do I mean when I say what, uh, that it helps us to reach the local minima? So essentially, it helps us reach the lowest point or let's say the least cost in the fastest time, right? So basically, it is when it is calculated on a point on the slope. For example, I calculate the gradient descent on this point, right? And this is the slope here. So basically, when it is calculated on this point, it gives the slope of the direction in which the function increases more. So let's say I want to reach this, uh, I want to reach the local minima, I want to reach the bottommost point. So what I'll do is, uh, I'll start moving from here, right? Let me show some, okay. I'll start moving from this step, right? I'll take a step down. This is a learning step. I'll take a step down and then I'll move to the next point. So I'll come here, I'll calculate the slope again and gradient descent would tell me that I need to travel further down, right? So when I calculate uh, the slope on this point, it points towards the direction in which the function increases more. So uh, let's say you know, the, the, slope is keep, uh, the slope keeps on decreasing this side and the slope keeps on increasing this side. So what I'll do is, I'll take a negative of the delta, let's say minus, this is a symbol that you don't, don't need to understand as of now, just uh, think of it as a delta, as a change, right? And C is, let's say, the cost function. This is the cost function. So this is the graph of this cost function. I want to reach the minimum uh, in the fastest time. Right. I want to reach the minimum very fast. So the goal of gradient descent is to minimize the loss function. So this is this cost. I want to minimize this cost. right? And this is the point of convergence. I'll start from here and I'll move uh, till the I'll reach this point. And what I'll do is I'll take these learning steps. And if you notice, each of these steps becomes smaller and smaller as I reach the minimum, as I approach the minimum. right? So the gradient descent gives the direction. What is the direction in which the slope decreases? So if you notice the slope is decreasing, the magnitude of the slope is decreasing. And if I, uh, so I am going down, the ma magnitude of the slope is decreasing. So I'll take a negative of the gradient descent, which is, I'll take a negative of the increasing function, which will give me the decreasing function. Right. So what gradient descent does is it tells me the direction in which the function increases more. But I want to move towards the minimum. So I'll take the negative of the gradient descent and I'll move to this point. I'll move to the minimum. Uh, so it gives me the, the direction and the rate of fastest increase. Right. Okay. The goal of the gradient descent is to minimize the loss function. We carry out two steps. First, we compute the slope. Right? That is the first order derivative of the function at the point that we are talking about. So let's say I'm at this point, I'll find the first order derivative right, of the function at this point. Next, I'll move in the direction opposite to the slope increase. So the slope is increasing as I move in this direction. right? The slope is increasing in this direction, but I'll move opposite to that since I want to reach the minimum. I think this makes sense. Um, and this is an example of a loss function that is commonly used here, mean squared error, right? Um, 
okay now this is another figure so i'm starting from here moving taking some steps to reach the global cost to, to reach the local minimum basically right and in this function this function has only one minimum but this function has two minimum right this function has three minimums one two and three uh okay so this is the process that is followed so we start here let's say first early uh, in the beginning the steps are taken very quickly and there are the steps taken are huge right we have we take big steps but after that we you know the size of the steps keeps on decreasing and we reach the local minimum slowly another uh, graphic is shown here so let's say i'm starting here right i want to reach here or if i am starting here i am reaching here slowly right so i want to reach the local minimum this is the global minimum and all these three are local minimum right global minimum means the uh, extreme the ultimate minimum of the entire function and local minimum means let's say if i consider this region right so anything that is here the minimum for that would be this point anything that is here minimum for that would be this point so this is local minimum okay uh, i think uh, the gradient descent is clear to everyone so this is basically a mathematical function that helps us reach the global minimum or the local minimum okay now let's move to the second concept uh this is a very common one you would come across this in uh, multiple places even when studying you know some uh, tangential topics or uh, you know very less related topics unrelated topics like econometrics or even when you talk about right um, economics you would study some of these uh, so you would study linear regression and this is very helpful when we are talking about modeling data so what it does is since i mentioned it helps us model data right uh, we can think of it this way so let's say i have some data and i want to fit that data right i want to model that data i want to identify what is the equation that that data is uh, following or what is the one equation that will help me define that data so what i do is i try to fit a line which minimizes the sum squared error for each data point so let's say i have this graph and all these are my data points now a straight line which would help me uh which would help me model these data points can be this one So this straight line can help me model this, th these data points. So what this straight line does is, uh, so what, what this straight line does is, it basically helps me model this, these these data points. So it helps me minimize the sum of the mean squared error. This is the error, right? This is the error, the difference between the line and the point. and the sum of the mean squared error for each data point has to be minimum for this line to be the perfect fit or the best possible fit right okay what does that mean so there is a function which is known as the mean squared error so we uh, we take the mean we square it and we so th that is the i i showed you this formula right this is the formula for msc we take the difference we take the error right this is the error we square it and we take the mean of these squared terms that is called the mean squared error so what i do is i take the mean squared error right and i add all of those mean squared errors and i try to minimize the sum of those errors which means that this or uh, this line will be such that it tries to minimize its distance from each data point right you can think of it that way and that will give me the perfect line 
that will give me the best possible line right all right so let's say you know i have a straight line this line best represents these data points that is linear regression uh okay i think this makes sense so next we will take an example here so um, let us assume that we have temperature right let us assume we have temperature uh, on the y axis i'll quickly draw this here only let's say we have temperature on the y axis and on the x axis we have time this is a temperature versus time graph so say for example for 20 28th of uh, january we'll have let's say 20 degrees celsius would be the temperature similarly we'll have something for the later dates so x is the predictor variable this helps you predict something and uh, y is the y is known as the criterion variable all right this is the same thing the variable that you want to predict is the dependent variable so x is independent these dates are not dependent on anything right so x is independent these dates the day is basically the x here a and b are constants these are the coefficients and we try to identify such a and b that the prediction is very very accurate right that is the purpose of the entire uh, linear regression model there are some assumptions now if you remember i have covered linear regression in statistics also so there are some assumptions uh, pertaining to linear regression the first one is that we are assuming that temperature and the time let's say so we have time here temperature and time have a linear regression relationship that is the assumption here uh, second assumption is that errors or residuals are normally distributed this was once asked uh, asked to me in a product analyst interview uh, of a big startup so this is a very common interview question the errors or the residuals are normally distributed we'll discuss about errors or re residuals more or i'll probably share something around it but basically i you know what you know what is uh, what are errors right and what is re residuals this distance from the data point to the line this is residual right this distance on both sides of the line this is a residual so errors are and residuals these are to be normally distributed what is normal distribution i think you all can uh, recall normal distribution right all right let's see a graph here uh, this is this is yeah, this is linear regression so basically this is the line which fits the best so these are iterations right so if you notice that earlier the line that we what the what was the value of y y equal to a plus bx earlier so y equal to a plus was Uh, not very accurate. Why was not accurate? Then after about 30 iterations, we finally got to a very good fit. We finally got a line which clearly identifies the trend, which clearly describes the trend that the data has. Right. So this data can be fitted on this line. Of course, there will be an error. There will definitely there is going to be an error. But um, this is linear regression. We cannot expect much. out of this simple relationship so uh, i was telling you about msc right this is a common loss function that is used we are trying to reduce this loss uh, i also discussed a few things with some people in the uh, in this course and uh, they were wanting to get more hands on experience on python right which is why i implemented python on uh, i implemented linear regression on python and we'll go through the code together so linear how to implement linear regression in python so i have taught you libraries already right you know about numpy we import this library first we also import other libraries like sklearn and all so uh, from sklearn there's a package within sklearn called linear regression linear regression right actually the package is linear model and linear regression is the class in that package so this helps us to uh, implement a linear re linear regression model in python so x is this array we are reshaping in what does minus 1 comma 1 mean 
so reshape essentially changes the shape of the array and what does minus 1 comma 1 mean minus 1 is when we are not specifying anything on the number of rows and one is that we'll have only one column so it will be like this 5 uh, 15 this will be this is the kind of array that we'll get and why is this why is a row kind of an array so this is uh, x and y so what are we trying to do we first imported the packages and the classes we have provided data and now we'll try to create a model linear we uh, this is the variable name the variable name is model and this is a uh, this is a instance of a class if you remember this is called an object so i've created an object here and i've fitted the model on x and y right x is this uh, this is x and this is y this is 5 20 and so on this array so on x and y we are trying to uh, fit x and y basically and then we try to get the result r squared does anyone remember what is r squared we have discussed everything so in the statistics class i think we discussed r square r squared so this is again uh, th this is essentially a metric that helps you understand your performance evaluate your performance better how well is your model performing so that this gives us the score of the model and we uh, th this is also known as the coefficient of determination and we print this coefficient of determination and we find that uh, 71% is the r squared value which means that if we draw a set right if we draw this kind of a set the overlapping is 71% which means that my model is has only a 71% kind of a fit if it overlaps entirely right if it is this kind of a thing then the uh, what would be the r squared the r squared would be 100% and if if these are disjoint sets then the r squared would be zero right so um, that is r squared we are trying to get the results and since this is linear regression i have basically what did i do if we get to the very bottom of things if we get to the very depth of things we have tried to identify the equation of a line basically right suppose these were our data points i already have this diagram these were our data points we have just tried to identify the equation of this line what is the line which gives us the best prediction what is the equation of the line which gives us the best prediction so um that is the uh, that is equal to y is equal to a plus bx kind of a line we found out the intercept and the coefficient so what are these these are the values of a and b this a and b right i told you that we'll be finding the value of a and b this is the motive of the entire uh this uh, of the entire journey of finding the equation right the equation will be found out only if we only if we have a and b so we just want to find a and b and this model linear regression model helps us find both helps us find the best line that fits our data that is the essence of uh, linear regression and finally if we want to predict i gave you the example of temperature right if i want to predict what be the what will be the weather on 7 march and i have uh, data of all days from let's say 1st of jan right so this prediction will be uh, linear regression will be helping me in this prediction and i can simply do model dot predict y predicted is basically y predicted and this is the predicted response we are printing the predicted response and this is the predicted response you can see here right so we basically identified the equation of a line any doubts till here then we'll move to logistic regression all right let's move to logistic regression now in logistic regression uh, this is very very similar to linear regression except the fact that here you know uh, we are trying we are not trying to 
i mean we are not trying to predict anything we are trying to classify so let's say um let's say we want to classify whether the person is happy or sad these are our input values right uh, and these are the weights so you don't need to go into all the mathematical stuff but basically we have a few parameters and based on those parameters we are trying to predict whether the person is happy or sad the typical example that is used in all machine learning courses is whether the cancer tumor is malignant or not malignant is basically uh, when the cancer tumor is harmful for the person and benign is the other word that is very commonly used b e n i g n uh, whether the tumor is malignant or benign benign is when the tumor is harmless for the person so this helps us classify whether it's a one zero kind of game here right we are trying to classify whether it is uh, malignant or benign or whether an email is spam or not now let me ask you one question based on this is a very common interview question that what model is used in the gmail spam classifier or any email classifier for that matter so the model that is used there is logistic regression uh here the kind of graph that we get is right uh, is this basically we try to identify this is 0.5 we try to identify whether the data point lies above this or below this which means that whether the data point lies on the positive side of the x axis or the negative side this is the value that we'll get so if the value is more than 0.5 we classify the email as spam or the tumor as malignant or the person as happy whatever and if it is lesser than 0.5 then we classify the tumor as benign or so let me type out the spelling of benign so that it whenever this words come with this word comes in uh, your interview or something you will be familiar with it so whenever the email is not spam or the tumor is benign that you will uh, in that case you will get the value lesser than this one you'll get the value here this will be the x value this will be the y value so it will lie somewhere here on the graph uh, wh what value are we calculating actually i have told you that we'll get this value we'll we'll get that value but the exact uh, function that helps us calculate this value is this we are again finding the we are again finding the cost but minus log h not x is uh, basically if we if y is equal to 1 and this this is the value you will get basically right just need to uh, don't need to understand a lot of things here basically this is the function that we uh, that you will be learning basically and the only thing that you need to understand is that we will have two kinds of things this is a classification algorithm will you will be where you will be classifying whether the email is spam or not and this is the kind of graph that we get one more thing that you need to know is that the function used here this one is a sigmoid function you might have heard of this function before also this is a sigmoid function uh, if you if you if you know it but it it, it is 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus t this is the function that is used here the function used in case of a uh, linear regression was this very simple linear function right this is clearly more complicated than linear regression we are not getting a straight line we are now getting a curved line if you see the graph of x cube right it looks something like this i mean something like this right and uh, if you see the graph of x square it looks something like this but linear graph looks like this only straight line so which means that if you add higher degrees uh if if you add a higher power on x x squared x cube or something then you will be able to capture more complexity you will be able to uh measure more complicated you will be able to predict more complicated stuff right and uh, similarly for logistic regression we are not using a polynomial kind of a function we are using this complicated function this is the function cost function that you are using and it helps you predict this kind of a uh, these are the data points and 
this is the curve that fits best on the data points so that is a uh, logistic regression similarly here you can see that uh, we are trying to again reach the minima so the objective is always to minimize the loss function or the cost function that is the objective and this is helping us logistic regression is helping us reach there and th this is the number of epochs that we are looking at so i'll tell you more about epochs later on right any questions till now 